Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome back with me, Nathan. In this video, I want to show you a new coding agent by Google that you can use for free. It's called Jules. So Google has wrapped up its I.O. conference last week, where they announced an exciting lineup of new AI technologies, from cutting-edge AI models upgrade to next-gen coding agents. One particularly interesting announcement is Jules, which is an asynchronous AI coding agent that's powered by the new Gemini 2.5 Pro. Jules is a fully autonomous and asynchronous agent that can work independently in your codebase, tackling tasks like developing features, writing tasks, fixing bugs, and refactoring legacy code. It can help you scratch many items in your to-do list while you sleep. Right now, Julius is in beta so you can use it completely for free. Looking at the announcement, Julius is very similar to OpenAI Codex which is a new cloud-based software engineering agent that can work on many tasks in parallel. But while Julius is free for access, Codex is actually a paid service, which is only accessible if you pay the $200 per month for the pro plan or the team plan which starts from $50 per month because you need to have at least 2 users. This is quite expensive for many parts of the world, probably even in the US. So this free offering from Google Julius is very much great news for us. Julius works by connecting to your GitHub account, from which it understands your code base, and then create a new branch to work on the changes. This way, you can work on the more interesting stuff and let Julius handle the boring part. In this demo, you can go ahead and ask any sort of request. For example, adding a dark mode to your app. First, Julius will boot up a new virtual machine where your code will be cloned. It will then inspect your code so that it gets the full context of your code base. After that, it will write a plan on how to solve the request and ask for your confirmation. Once you confirm the plan, Julius will grab the code from GitHub and put it in a virtual machine where it can make the changes to the code autonomously. At this point, you can leave Julius working in the background and do other things if you want to, such as going to the gym or take a nap. Now, Julius has finished making the changes here and it asks for permission to publish a new branch in GitHub. You can allow it and then take over from there. You can review the changes and then create a pull request to merge with the main branch if you want to. Now, one thing you have to note is that Jules will use all data you entered into it, from the code base you link to it to your conversations, to train and improve the product. If you don't want Google to train their AI using your data, you can opt out in the settings. To get started with Jules, simply head to jules.google.com and you need to sign in to a Google account to access it. Once you sign in, you will see the interface for interacting with Jules as shown here. To let Jules work on your project, you need to connect it to your GitHub account, so let's do that by clicking on this button over here. Once Jules is connected to GitHub, you can select the repos you want Jules to have access to. You can let it have access to all the repos you have, or just specific ones. Here, I will select just two repositories that will be used for this tutorial. Now click install, and then you will be redirected to Jules, where you can start working on your code base. Now, if you don't know what to ask Jules about, there is a list of prompts here prepared by the Google team to give you some ideas. I will leave a link to this in the description, but this repo basically has all the common tasks you might want to do in Jules. There is a list for everyday development tasks, debugging, documentation, testing, and so on. Now, since we have an empty repository, let's try one of these start from scratch prompts. I will use this one to create a web app from scratch. So back in Jules, now enter the prompt here to create a new Express app. Select the repo to use and then you can also select the branch as a starting point. If there's none, then you don't need to change it. And then press enter. Now Jules will start a virtual machine and then clone your code into the virtual machine and then it will draft a plan to tackle this request just like in the demo before. Now here is the plan generated by Jules. There is a time limit as shown here. Jules will automatically run the plan if you didn't send back any response. We can check on the plan step by step now, and if there is something to change, you can simply communicate with the chat interface again. I think it's all good, so let's just approve this plan. And now Jules will start working on the task. It will take some time to finish, so let me fast forward the video until it's done. Now, before the work is finished, you can already see the files created or edited by Jules on the canvas to the right here. You can preview the changes that's being done by Jules over here. And here is the response given by Jules when the task is finished. It will provide an outline of the tasks being done and there is a button to publish the code to a branch. 
You can also open the canvas to the right in full screen mode and see all the files modified during the process. If there's anything you would like to change, you can tell Jules about it using the chat UI. If all is well, then click the publish branch button. Jules will push the code to GitHub where you can view and retrieve the code. And now the code is published in GitHub, so let's head over there. Alright, here's the code generated by Jules. We can copy this code to our local computer just like any other code. Just copy the URL of the GitHub repository and then open your favorite code editor. For example, here I open my VS code and then open the terminal. Then type the command git clone, followed by the repository URL. Press enter to clone the code base, and now I have the code base in my computer. And now I can follow the instructions to run it, which is to run npm install first, and then run npm start. The app is now running, so let's open the local host link by pressing the command button and left click or control and left click in Windows or Linux. And here's the app generated by Jules. And that's how you interact with Jules in a nutshell. Now, one thing that is great about Jules is that you can send instructions to Jules as many times as you want in a single conversation. So if you find something you want to add or change, just send a request from the chat box again. You can open the Jules sidebar as well to see tasks and code bases assigned to Jules, as well as the remaining task limit for the day. Currently, Jules is limited to 5 tasks per day, which is fine as it is still in beta. Now, 5 task limits doesn't mean 5 prompts, as you can send as many prompts in a single chat conversation as you want. Let me show you an example. So in this app we just generated before, I will ask Jules to build a modern CRM dashboard that has a sidebar navigation and a dashboard that shows valuable insights. Click the send button and let Jules work and notice that the tasks count is not added. The tasks count for the day will only be incremented when you start a new conversation with Jules. So first, let's open a new tab and here I will select the other repo connected to Jules and then simply ask what's going on in this repo. Click send and now you can see that a new task is added to Jules daily count. Isn't that awesome? There is actually no limit to how many times you send a request to Jules in a single conversation. Okay, now that the tasks are running, let's skip ahead to when the CRM dashboard generation is finished. And here, the task is finished. We can see the changes by opening the canvas again. There are many files created by Jules here. If all is well, let Jules publish a branch again. Because the branch is already created, this will let Jules update the code in the same place. To update the code on your computer, go back to the editor and run the git pull command. Now, if you're not familiar with Git and GitHub, I will create a video explaining the most important part of these tools for beginners later, so you can consider to subscribe if that's something you want to see. And if you're already subscribed, thank you very much. Alright, so here's the result generated by Jules. You can see that it did a pretty good job in terms of creating the base structure for the app. You have the main dashboard with key insights and charts, and then several menus in the navigation sidebar. The expense chart is not yet generated, so we need to update that later. For now, these menu pages are not implemented yet, so I will work with Jules to implement the pages and make it all look better. Alright, so here's the result I get after I did some vibe code sessions with Jules. You can see the dashboard is now improved with charts for revenue, expense, and profit. The charts can still be improved further, but I think it's okay for now. And then all the pages are now finished, so when we click on one of the menus, we can view and manage the data for those pages. We can edit the data, for example, change this task priority from high to low. Click save and the data will be changed. We can also create a new task here. Let's say explore Jules, set some values, and then click add task. And a new task is now added. Now I'm completely hands off with this app as all I did is instructing Jules around. There are many different components created by Jules in this app. Here, let me show you the commits saved in GitHub. And as you can see here, all the commits are made by Jules. It's quite cool what the AI can do, although it does take a while. As you can see here, it took around 3 hours to create this project from scratch. 
I leave the AI working in the background and I only receive a notification whenever Jules requires my attention. Back in Jules, here's all the conversation logs. I actually started a new task because there's an error in my first task, as you can see here. Sometimes Jules just give an error and ask to start a new task. Probably happens when many people use the service, as I can imagine how huge the resources used for Jules, because it seems to create a new virtual machine each time a new task is created. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining my YouTube membership where you can use this channel's emojis, get early access to new videos, plus a lot more. But yeah, in general that's how you can use Jules to deploy an asynchronous coding agent. You can think of Jules as a remote assistant that can work on a specific issue you assign to it. Once it finishes its work, you can let it publish its code in GitHub, and then you can take over from there. The way it works is quite similar to OpenAI Codex and Cloud's GitHub agent, but Jules is more powerful as it can create its own virtual machine to do the tasks you assign to it. And now we have come to the end of this video. So, what do you think about the Jules coding agent? I encourage you to try it out for yourself as it's completely free and let me know about your experiences. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts or questions in the comments. I will join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, Code with Nathan is a channel dedicated to simplify tax topics so that you can master them easily. So make sure you subscribe if that's something you find interesting or useful. Make sure you like this video, turn on the notification bell, and all the other good stuff as it helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks again for watching until the end. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in other videos. Bye bye.